Hello, I'm Ross Sobolev. I'm Nora Downhauer. We're standing here today on the third and final day of Celebration 82. This is February 26th, and uh, this is the final day of three days of Celebration 82, a united gathering of the Tlingit, Haida, and Simsian nations gathered in the spirit of unity to reopen the boxes of our culture. The first day's activities, which actually happened two days ago, um, began in a traditional manner with the coming in dance. Many of our uh, ceremonies begin this way, and perhaps, Nora, you could give us an idea of the coming in ceremony and how things went on the first day two days ago. Well, everybody, traditionally, everybody enters into the house on a song, and this one was uh, the Simshian song and all the different dele delegations from different places entered all at once and this is the way it was in traditional times but now they combined every dance group with one another. One of the things that we are stressing throughout this is the importance of our clan. Our clan history is uh, really is what defines who we are and at this very moment, behind us, we have some important activities going on regarding the Dog Salmon Clan. Perhaps, Nora, you could give us an idea of what they're doing. Uh, they began with Forrest with coming out to talk about his uh, genealogy and how he came from Juno, which is the, he belongs to the Tlinidi group. And then he uh, presented his hat, the coho, or dog salmon hat, and the uh, dipper uh, worked right into it, and also a robe that's uh, made in the fashion of a chilcat robe, also on the same things, the dog salmon and the dipper. And then he called up his sons and his daughter-in-law, Cecilia Coons, and uh, he put the hat on Cecilia Coons, and then he had his uh, clan son uh, put the robe on him. This is the traditional way of treating the clan objects, the art objects of the Tlingit people. And then uh, he had Ed Coons speak about the history of why they own these uh, emblems. And then he sang a song uh, to close out the event. There are numerous important activities going down. The first day, two days ago, of our Celebration 82, we had some remarks by Byron Malott, chairman of the board of Sea Alaska Corporation, and by Judson Brown, the chairman of the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation Board of Trustees. Yesterday was the second day of Celebration 82. As much as possible, we're trying to provide you with activities that are going on today. And if they don't do too much drumming, we might be able to stand still and tell you about the activities as they're happening. Nora, perhaps you could give us an idea of some of the actions of yesterday and some of the groups and the important events that happened. I'll have to glance at my notes for a while. Uh, First there was the Yakutat group, and uh, then uh, the elders spoke, and one of them was a woman whose name is Emma Marks. A lot of them spoke on genealogies and locations of their traditional villages. And then uh, the Haidas came in, Haida group from Masset, Queen Charlotte Islands, Ketchikan, and Haidaburg. And then the Shungu Kades and Dave Katzik uh, singing their uh, ancestor uh, Jimmy, Tom Jimmy's uh, songs. And then the, uh, we moved over to the Tukakadi clan from Haines, Deshuk, uh, who is a group called Grisan Dancers, led by Donna Walk, Austin Hammond. Uh, so they entered on this Ponana um, songs, which is the Athabascan songs that were adopted by the Sakakadi uh, uh, clan. 
uh, one of the significant songs was Kakashteni. Kakashteni was one of the leaders who went into the interior and came, uh, when he was coming back, uh, he got some kind of infection in his foot and they left him behind. So uh, these songs were composed by him when people were walking away from him. So it's a very sad occasion when people sing this song, but this is a different kind of occasion, so they decided to sing it. Another significant thing was uh, they brought uh, the Tana of Danawak, and this is Austin Hammond's namesake and showed it to the audience that they had this with them. The, the Tenar is his namesake. His namesakes. It, it once belonged to another Danawak before him. Well, I, I think an important thing to note here is uh, the fact that uh, the importance of the songs, um, a number of songs uh, we sing today, mm -hmm. perhaps we're a Haida group and we're singing a song that was uh, that we got from the Simsian people or from uh, other groups. There was a great deal of trade like this and uh, I think it's important to note that they weren't just songs. The dances we're doing aren't just dances. There's a great deal of significance to them and the fact that we're able to use a song and the songs are clan property is uh, quite significant. Another uh, part of that trade was the art. You know, the, the regalia, uh, the kunana, people of yesterday, the Sakwakadi, came in wearing the uh, Athabascan outfits. That was really uh, visible. And uh, also another thing that was happening during that time was uh, he called on his uh, grandchild, David Katzik, and he was responding the traditional style of responses when somebody addresses <coughs> you in an oratory, you have to respond recognizing that somebody is talking to you. So David Katzik was doing that. It's another interesting thing of these types of events, um, the exchange, once again, the balance among the two sides of our nations and uh, the strengths of our culture because of the balance that was inherent in the way they were put together. It, uh, Traditionally, audience and performer participation, it's a two-way thing, traditionally. So this is what was happening when he was talking to the, uh, David Katzik. And it is great. The whole, the entire thing is beautiful. It's 11.30 in the morning now, and we are preparing to see the entrance of the dancers from Angoon, the Kutsnuwu dancers. Nora, can you give us an idea of what they will be doing as their entrance begins? Well, I think first the sound leader comes in and the uh, singers, and then they start singing and they enter one by one. And sometimes you'll see the dancers coming in with their backs to the audience at, and uh, showing their emblems to the audience. And there will be few hats. Uh, the dog salmon hat is one, the beaver hat, and the brown bear hat. And then there's, I'm not sure if they're wearing their um, their uh, headdresses, the ermine headdresses, Shaki at today. I hope they will be, though, which is worn during the Yekuti, the spirit dance. This is the one that's done behind the blanket. And also they had the Kangush, Kangush dance, which is the abalone covered uh, headpiece with the hair on it. And they did that behind the blanket the other day. Okay, they're just about ready to go. They're an excellent group. About three o'clock this afternoon, Juno time, the Simsian nation was able to perform for Celebration 82. We heard a number of uh, speeches and statements, cultural information about the Simsians, and we also enjoyed some of their dancing. It's about 5.30 now, Juno time, and uh, right going on behind us now is uh, people from the 
community of Huna. Nora, can you give us an idea what they might be doing this afternoon? Uh, talking about the uh, emblems of their clan right now, it's the Tkdeintan uh, peoples. Uh, they're called the Tsatkhan dancers, which means uh, Mount Fairweather dancers. Uh, they're talking about some of the art objects they brought with them and also the people that are here with them, relatives and talking on genealogy. Did you have a real idea what they might be doing this afternoon? No, nobody knows. The only thing we have to do is be here and not miss a thing. I'm not going to <laughs> elaborate any further. Well, we're beginning to uh, wind up the coverage of Celebration 82. It's uh, about 5.30 now, and uh, Nora, can you give us an idea what happened uh, starting at about 10 this morning and continuing right up to this moment? The uh, Hutsnuwu dancers went down and uh, talked about histories of their clan art and also how their young people were related to them through this art and it's really complicated to kind of capsulize it uh, there are a lot of things that went on a lot of different things a lot of different people and all I could say is it's been extraordinary in English couldn't have said it better myself. The, uh, I had the privilege of dancing with the uh, Angoon group, and we were on for about three hours. Uh, all of the events that have happened over these past three days have been quite extraordinary. I anticipate that the final events of Celebration 82 will be winding up possibly by midnight tonight. There are still events to go. We have uh, adoptions to take place, uh, love songs to sing, and uh, still many other events that, as we say, we might not even know what's going to be up next. But we'd like to finish out today by talking about the time capsule that the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation is going to be preparing out of this event. Uh, the capsule itself, which I have a picture of here in my hand, will be in the shape of one of our traditional bent wood boxes. It'll be cast in bronze, and we've had a, a very famous designer uh, design the time capsule, which will be kept on a, a large pedestal um, in the Sea Alaska building. The base of the, uh, of the monument itself will be made of stone, and we'll have a number of brass tablets on the side that will include the names of the different organizations that contribute uh, different items to the time capsule. It's undecided yet whether or not that capsule will be opened in 1991 or the year 2000, but we are proceeding ahead with the project and we've received contributions already for it. The uh, four sides of the box are going to have four different designs that will be commissioned by different artists and will be cast in bronze one side, of course, for each of the three nations, the Tlingits, the Haidas, and the Simsians. And the fourth side of the box will have some symbol that will uh, signify the unification of the three nations. Do you have anything to say on that uh, time capsule, Nora? Have you well, had anything? I think it's one of the best ideas I've ever heard. And uh, I can hardly wait to live long enough to see what is in there. There will be number of artifacts, documents, complete transcription of the Celebration 82. Um, I don't know if all the videotapes will fit in there, but um, it's going to be a real addition to the archives of the Clinkett, Haida, and Simsian people. Celebration 82, once again, was brought to you by the Sea Alaska Corporation, Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation, Alaska State Council on the Arts, and the Alaska Humanities Forum. It's been um, a terrific three days, wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. I think that uh, 
everybody feels good about it. There's a positive energy flowing through everybody, and it just really feels so good. I can't tell you how good I feel. Haven't slept too well, but it's good. I don't anticipate I'll get much sleep tonight either. Once again, this is Celebration 82, a united gathering of the Clinkett, Haida, and Simpsian people. We're glad you were able to join us and help us as the sight, sound, and spirit of our three cultures echo across the land.